live in an age of influencers, social media icons who have built large followings on their platforms. They got their name as a reference to the large influence that they have over their fans, often called clout. In today's video, we will focus on how you can partner with these influencers to promote your music. How do you actually do this? Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're looking to learn how to stand out online. I'm here to teach you all the different ways to market yourself as a musician. So how do you partner with influencers as a musician? Well, when you partner with these influencers, there are many options for them to promote you. Perhaps they'll make a TikTok using your track and it catches on and goes viral. Perhaps they'll post an Instagram story post or reel with your track playing and then link it to the Instagram music library. So how do you get started? Well, first you need to look for niche influencers. So the term influencer used to refer to people on social media with truly enormous followings. But these days there seem to be an endless number of content creators across every platform. Where do you even start when looking for relevant influencers to work with? Here's an example. I recently launched a TikTok campaign in my agency to an Afrobeat song, Man on Fire Remix by Idaham featuring Falls. So we decided to focus on the most relevant niche, Nigerian influencers in Nigeria, Europe, and the US who are making content to and about Afrobeat tracks. So that narrowed down our potential list of creators dramatically and gave us a place to start by searching relevant hashtags and similar sounds on TikTok. We search for niche-based hashtags to find the content creators who use them. So hashtag Afrobeat, hashtag Nigerian comedy, hashtag Nigerian dancers. I mean, you get the idea. Not what hashtags you are using, but what are the influencers in your niche who has your fans using? Should be the same type of hashtags, by the way. I began by creating a contact list of Nigerian influencers creating content to Afrobeat tracks. We know because of their niche, they'll be more open to creating something with our track. That's why this partnership is so beneficial for us. It gets the track directly in front of its target audience. So we reached out to work with about four to five influencers who were coordinated to post it within the same approximate time frame. So by working with several medium sized accounts, around 200,000 up to a million, our chances of overlap were larger, meaning that many followers would most likely hear the song multiple times. This resulted in their followers beginning to organically create content to the track on TikTok, followed by two major influencers, even a Nollywood star did it. This organic cascade effect is the beauty of social media today. What has been your favorite recent trend and who was the biggest influencer that you saw doing it? Comment below, please. Now, let's talk micro versus macro creators. So the reality is there's no standard pricing for influencers, meaning they can charge whatever they want, whatever they think they can get. If you start out by contacting content creators with millions of followers, you're likely gonna get some pretty steep prices. Chances are you don't have a large starting budget and it's already divided between Facebook and Instagram ad, YouTube ad, some playlist placement and other necessary expenses. So that leaves us an important question. Do you blow your entire budget to partner with one big influencer? Or do you spread it between several small ones? Take into consideration that working with an influencer is no guarantee. It's a gamble. They may have several hundred of thousands of followers on TikTok, but they may have low engagement, meaning they only get a few thousand views per video. Some creators also hide videos that don't do well so that it appears that they have a higher engagement on everything that they post. So how do you mitigate your risk? So spreading your budget out over several small influencers is a better bet. Bear in mind, some of these smaller influencers are growing fast and creating great content. Just because they haven't made it into the million mark yet doesn't mean they won't. And I'd rather work with 10 micro influencers who are new niche specific than one macro influencer who may or may not work out. Before you pitch your chosen influencer, take some time to build a rapport with them. A warm pitch is very different from a cold pitch. Having a rapport first means that you could potentially get collabs for free. So when it's time to reach out, the goal is to pitch the value of the song and the project in general and why it overlaps with their content and their audience. 
In my experience, influencers much prefer to be creative with their own content. They don't want too many restrictions and guidelines on its creation and format. They are typically the experts on their content and audience. So letting them be creative on their own terms is actually gonna benefit you. When it comes to pitching, I like to set a cap on the budget right away, especially if I'm focusing on the medium-sized account. I typically tell them upfront what the budget is so they can let me know if they're interested or not. If they aren't, that's okay. Just move on to the next one. And that begs the question, how are the prices set? All right, so first we have the cost per view. So look at their last 12 videos and figure their average views per video. After a bit of research, I found that large brands pay TikTok influencers approximately 0.01 to 0.02 dollars per view. And that the ad prices on TikTok are about $10 per thousand views, which means the baseline is about 0.01 dollar per view. However, this can backfire as many large creators remove their poor performing posts so their content and engagement looks better than it actually is. Next, we have the standard fixed fee. So negotiating fees like cost per views can take up a lot of time and effort. So my standard practice is to just offer a fixed fee. Take it or leave it. It's also worth noting that it's a great way to weed out the influencers who are way over your budget so you don't waste their time or yours. Some influencers set their own prices. These are typically the influencers with followers in the millions. But you'll also get some small influencers who have some ridiculously high fixed costs. For example, one of the influencers we pitched to had 60,000 followers but was asking $500 for a post. Luckily, there's so many other influencers out there, so just move on to the next one. You'll find influencers who have a fair structure for their pricing based on their following and are used to working with brands. However, there will always be room for negotiation. If an influencer is asking you for a certain fee, then you have begun a business transaction. That means at this point, there are certain things that you can ask for in order to justify the amount the influencer wants. For example, you can ask for the number of story views or swipe ups on Instagram, the average number of website clicks, what their engagement was for the last 30 days, and whether they've done any successful paid collabs before. Speaking of successful, how do you measure your success? You need to monitor the influencer campaigns you are doing the same way you are measuring the playlist placements and the results you get. When running a TikTok campaign, you need to note the number of organic creators that jump on the trend after your influencers post. On TikTok, you can see if the organic creators posting are following those influencers. This lets you backtrack who likely had the most influence on your organic creators. The more difficult it becomes to track, the more successful your campaign is. Also, remember to measure the streaming numbers of the track as well in parallel with the posts and trends you are promoting. Going viral is great, but you have to remember the ultimate goal is to promote the music. Now, the big question. What if it doesn't work? Part of building a good rapport with your influencers is having a backup plan for failure. If someone posted their collaboration and their content flopped, we'd likely already agreed on an alternative solution. Like for example, sharing it over to their Instagram or doing a second video. Have a good dialogue with the creators you're working with. It makes keeping them accountable to the results of the collaboration much easier. To sum up, paid ads are officially old school. Working with influencers is guerrilla marketing. For a digital age, the dream of many creators is to grow large enough to monetize their work and become an influencer. So use that. Getting your work out there is absolutely possible. It just takes good marketing, strong communication skills, and some research into who your target audience really is. Influencers are more open than you might think to working with you. Just do your homework first, set your budget, and give it a shot. You'll be viral before you know it. Be sure to follow for more content on how to make it as a musician on social media. See you next week!